Yo, what's going on Kones? It's your boy iStream and I am back with another juicy video for you guys. And this time we are going to take a look at my four finger claw gameplay setup. Alright, just to give you guys a bit of a background info, for the past 14 months I've actually been playing Call of Duty Mobile. So the transition going into Apex Mobile is going to be relatively easy for me. In fact, I've actually already put it to action because I managed to play in the previous closed beta for India and Philippines Apex Mobile. I got to put it to the test and it's pretty much the same. So yeah, let's get straight to it guys. Okay, so as with most of us, if not all of us, when we first started playing mobile games, especially mobile shooters, I'm pretty sure that we started playing with only two thumbs. Then we transitioned to three fingers, four fingers, six, and some have even got to eight. And who knows, some crazy guy might even be playing with their toes. But ultimately, it's down to you how you want to progress with mobile gaming. When it comes to playing shooter games, my main focus is always movement. That can cover a lot of things like how do I make myself a hard target to hit? How do I efficiently rotate to and from places? You know, just general stuff like how do I gain advantage over my enemies? For me, movement is art. The better I can move, the better I feel when I'm actually playing the game. So I always get creative and try new things all the time. The time so it is very very important that I have the correct HUD setup for my game let's break down my HUD right now I've actually put all my HUD controls together in a group based on how I would use them on their own and also as a part of a group of HUD that works together okay let's take a look at the buttons that I use first the most all of these things have something to do with movement apart from my directional keypad on the left as you can see on the very top the crouch slash the slide button is right next to the jump button pretty self explanatory as soon as I slide the next thing I'll do is jump I use my right index finger for these two buttons then we have the ADS button right next to the crouch button to the left the reason I put this here is because I prefer to tap and hold to go into my ADS with my right index finger and use my left index finger to shoot with I'll cover my shoot buttons in a little bit the reason why I've got my crouch slash slide button and jump button on the top right with my index finger is so that I can actually use my thumb to turn left right up and down as I'm sliding and or jumping this is incredibly important for movement let's say you have a setup where you use your thumb to look around with to pan around with on the right hand side but you also use that very same thumb to slide and jump with what you'll end up having to do is lifting that thumb to go from look to jump or slide but if you have a setup like mine you can just keep your thumb down to be turning the direction that you want to turn to and use your right index finger as you look around to slide and or jump meaning you can literally slide look around trace and follow your target and shoot all at the same time which is something that is impossible to do with playing only two thumbs you can actually do this with three fingers but it's just not as optimal because you can use your shoot button to hold it down and look around at the same time but you will still need to lift one of your fingers to go to that shoot button the reload button I put it there specifically because I wanted it to be pretty close to my thumb button and also my slide and jump buttons my general rule of thumb is try not to reload out in the open reloading leaves you very very vulnerable so you want to find cover before you reload which means with it being close to my movement button I can only use one or the other either reload or movement buttons so when I'm sliding and jumping around I wouldn't be pressing the reload button at the same time likewise when I'm looking around I don't really want to be reloading at the same time which also brings me to my next point the weapon selection boxes again another general rule of thumb switch your weapons instead of reloading mid gunfight it is much quicker it is much safer and it will allow you to get back into a fight quicker but if both weapons run out of ammo then I have my reload button on the left hand side now the reload button I can either tap that with my right index finger or my right thumb it just depends on what I'm trying to do at the time now my tactical and ultimate buttons which are placed on the right hand side of the screen first of all the ultimate button it doesn't really matter that much where you place it a because you don't get to use it as often and B because of the fact that you can't press and hold it and turn around you're gonna have to aim first and then tap it anyway so really just have it wherever you feel it's comfortable for you now the tactical this particular button will matter depending on your playstyle and who your legend is going to be if for example my main was Wraith then her tactical would mainly fall into the movement section so I would place this tactical button right next to my slide and or jump currently I main Revenant and with this tactical you need to aim first before you use it and shoot it out so I decided to have it to the right of my thumb so I can just swiftly press that tactical and 
and shoot out my ability. You're probably wondering if I need to aim with Revenant skill and it also shoots out, why don't I put it right next to my shoot buttons? Well, I'll explain to you very, very quickly before I get into my shoot buttons. In short, I do not want to use my left index finger for anything apart from shooting my gun. Lastly, you'll also notice that on the top right of the screen, there is my scope change button. I don't really know how to use this yet because this isn't available on COD Mobile, so I'm just gonna leave it there for now. Actually, there's a couple more things. On the bottom right of my screen, you'll see my microphone, chat, and also earphone buttons. I don't really use those, so I thought I'd just put them away, but I still wanted to be able to use them, so I just literally stuck them in that corner where my thumb can access them if and when I need to use them. Then we have the ping button. Now, I don't know if you guys have realized, but there is an auto ping function in Apex Mobile. So pinging in here is not really as active as I thought it was gonna be, but I put it down there anyway because I still like to manually ping things. Um, and I'll be able to just look around, aim, and then use the ping button when I'm ready with my right thumb. All right, the middle section, what I call the vitals section. This section basically contains all the vital information that I need to know throughout the game. Your eyes are basically the most important things that you use to play the game. The less they have to travel from place to place, the more efficient you'll be. So I'll put all the survival stuff in one group. For example, my minimap is placed at the bottom middle section of the screen. Right underneath it are my character health bars. So let's say I'm in an intense gunfight, the zone decides to close, I will look at my minimap and see where I actually need to rotate to and right underneath that are my health bars so I will know exactly how much health I have to play with if I decide to go out of the zone, play the zone a little bit and then come back in when the, when the area is safe. If I look at the map, the zone is closing in, is right next to me and I only have about what 10% of my HP left, I will not run out of the zone. But if I had full health, I can actually use the outside of the zone to go out and escape danger. Here's a scenario. I'm going into the zone. Someone sees me. I have full health. They start shooting at me. Now, let's say that this enemy has 10% HP left. I have full health or close to full health, but I am outside of the zone starting taking zone damage. That enemy will not go outside of the zone and push me. And therefore, I can reposition myself, hug outside the wall a little bit, stay in the zone and then rotate out to the left or my right where I'm not going to be chased and go into the safe zone. And that decision will come quicker and easier because my map is right next to my health so I know exactly what to do and how to work around my situation. Then we have my consumable buttons to the right. Throwables on the left, heals on the right. Again, these are things that provide you vital information. So when rotating, you need to know what you have to fight with and or survive with. So when I'm checking that map to try and figure out where I'm gonna rotate to, it would be amazing to know if I've got a grenade to throw in front of me and make way for me to go in. Likewise, when I'm trying to run around and survive and I see my HP very, very low, right next to it, just a little bit to the right, I can immediately see what health kits I have to use. Okay, over to the left-hand side, we have the player counter box. Again, vital information. When rotating, especially in the final circle, you wanna have a look at your map, you want to assess your health situation and try and figure out your next move based on how many people and or squads are left. So for example, if I look at my minimap, final circle, I see lots of buildings, I need to go into the middle. I am going to be well aware that they can either be A, camping the building, or B, they might have a higher ground on one of these buildings. So I'll give you guys two scenarios. First one, final circle. I quickly look at my map, try and figure out where I'm going to go. In my map, there's about 10 buildings in the area, and I need to get into one of them because the safe zone is closing. Okay, so I'll look at my mini map, and then I'll look at the counter. The player counter says two squads left. This information tells me that there's no need to panic right now and just get into any building because the likelihood of a building having someone in it is small. Obviously, it's still not impossible that there's someone going to be in that building, so you've got to be prepared anyway, but the likelihood of you getting killed as soon as you go into a building is small, and therefore you can get into any building, recalibrate yourself, assess your stock and health situation, take a bit of a breather and get ready for the final fight. On the flip side, scenario number two, final circle, two buildings left, four squads left. The likelihood of a building having someone in it is very high, so I probably wouldn't get into that building because someone might have camped it already. So I'll probably just find a spot outside or just outside of the building, recalibrate myself, take a breather and figure out what I'm going to do next. All this information came from one small place on my screen, which is exactly why I decided to group them all up together closely. On the bottom left of my screen is the back button. No idea why I have it there, I just do. Moving on. Directional pad, left thumb, kept it there, period. And last but 
definitely not the least, my shoot buttons. Top one for hip fire, bottom one for automatic ADS. I'm a hip fire type of guy. Absolutely love to hip fire. So I put the hip fire shoot button at the top and automatic ADS at the bottom. Because for me, tapping something on the top with my left index finger is a lot easier than trying to tap the one on the bottom. To be honest, I very rarely use the bottom shoot ADS button because if I'm going to ADS, I'm going to go tap my ADS button on the right hand side with my right index finger anyway. But I put it there because sometimes I do actually use it. But yeah, there we have it guys, my complete heads up display control setup. Unfortunately, at the time of recording this video, I didn't have access to the game. So I don't have exact examples to show you guys. So make sure you stay tuned because when the next closed beta releases, I'm going to redo this guide and then I'm going to show you exactly what I mean whenever I give the examples out. But yeah, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If you liked it and if you believe it could be helpful for others, please do consider to share it. And if you like it, you know, consider dropping that like, subscribe and hit the bell button because your boy is trying to get 1000 subscribers on YouTube and I would greatly appreciate your support. If you don't want to subscribe, that's entirely up to you. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.